Hey everybody, KC here. Uh, I'm recording this on Sunday afternoon. Uh, it is a gorgeous day here in Connecticut, sitting outside, doing a little work, having a beer, you know, life is good. I wanted to circle back on a conversation that was taking place last week on Morning News Beat that was prompted by the article that Megan Smith, uh, a student at Tufts University, uh, wrote for the university's magazine, basically suggesting that the demands of a world that has a climate crisis going on uh, may be inconsistent with the benchmarks that are traditionally put forward um, for instruments of capitalism. And that it may be that, you know, the things that we've ordinarily looked at, ordinarily looked at as being a sign that capitalism is working you know, simply may not be good for the for the planet, may not be good for the climate, uh, the, the situation in which we face ourselves. And as was discussed elsewhere on Morning Newsbeat last week, it's really not the planet that's in crisis, it's humanity that's in crisis. And it was interesting to me that we got pushback on that. Um, and, and from people who were saying things like, hey, come on, you know, capitalism is the world's greatest system and, and that if you're going to be capitalistic, you gotta be capitalistic and everything else that is anti-growth and therefore you don't need to adjust your benchmarks. And I, I just thought that that was sort of remarkably closed-minded thinking. Um, I mean, it just seems to me that when realities change, you have to shift. And I'll give you an example of that. It has nothing to do with the climate, right? How many companies out are there out there that talk about customer service and yet everybody from the store managers right up to the CEO are compensated based on the on how low they can drive uh, their labor factor. Well, in fact, if you're a company that prides yourself on great customer service, that not, might not be the benchmark you want to use. I mean, it just seems to me that benchmarks do, need to be adjusted to account for reality and to account for strategies that may not be in sync with how every company thinks. I mean, think about Jim Sinegal for a second at, at, at Costco. Uh, who tried to, or Jeff Bezos when he started Amazon, right? They would always argue that, hey, listen, if you're interested in a short-term investment return, you don't want to invest in Costco or Amazon. Jim Sinegal used to react to the people who would say, boy, if you could just raise your margins by one point, lower your labor factor by one point, ah, it'd be amazing. He'd say, no, that wouldn't be good for the company. It wouldn't be good for the customers. It wouldn't be good for my employees. I'm not going to do that. And eventually the stock market will catch on that this makes us a better company. In fact, he was right about that. So it seems to me to be short-sighted and sort of naive to say, no, no, listen, whatever the tunnel we're on as a capitalistic society, we're going to stay within the confines of that in the tunnel and we're not going to think differently even when reality demands it. And here's the other thing. This is written by a college student. These are the people who are going to be working for our companies in the future. These are the people who are going to be um, are going to be customers of the, of the companies of the future, and they may be leading companies in the future. It seems to me that what companies are better off if they say, wait a minute, this is an interesting way to think. She may a college senior. She doesn't know everything, right? But she may have a sense of the world that we, excuse the train, about 100 yards that way are the train tracks. Every once in a while, Amtrak runs through. She may have a sense of the world that we simply don't have. And it makes, it's, it just seems to me that it's sensible to listen to people like that, pay attention to their points of view, and bring them into companies to say, okay, help us rethink how we go forward. Listen, you know, it, it doesn't make sense to be in a, have tunnel vision. It doesn't make sense to practice epistemic closure. It doesn't make sense to close off our minds to the possibilities that the, the world is changing and the circumstances in which we all do business, they're changing. And maybe we have to adjust some of our benchmarks and expectations along with it. Anyway, that's what's on my mind this morning as I uh, record this actually on Sunday afternoon. And as always, I wanna hear what's on your mind.